The future of nuclear energy might just include hydrogen. While there's a lot of hype and speculation about the potential for a hydrogen economy, its use as a source of energy is expected to grow dramatically over the next few decades. Use of nuclear energy to produce hydrogen is attractive not only because of the large scale that it could be deployed, but also because it can be done essentially with zero emissions. The overwhelming majority of hydrogen produced today, greater than 99%, is made from fossil fuels, meaning that even if you do see the rare hydrogen-powered car or bus, it's really more of a proof of concept than any actual positive impact on the environment. However, demonstration plants for hydrogen production are planned or already started at several nuclear plants in the US, the UK, Canada, Russia, and China, with the Nine Mile Point plant producing its first hydrogen in March 2023. The global role of hydrogen for energy consumption is expected to increase from today's 2.5% to 10% by 2050, and of that 90% should come from low-carbon sources. With that kind of growth, what's nuclear's potential to get there? And how does it compare against other ways of producing hydrogen? So let's dive in and see what's possible for nuclear hydrogen. Although hydrogen's potential as a transportation fuel gets most of the attention, it actually accounts for almost none of the hydrogen currently consumed. Of the approximately 100 million tons of hydrogen produced in 2022, less than 0.01 went into fueling direct transportation. At the end of 2021, there were 51,000 hydrogen fuel cell vehicles on the roads, compared to nearly 17 million electric vehicles, and about 1.5 billion total vehicles. The largest use for hydrogen is actually to make ammonia for fertilizers, accounting for around half of all hydrogen consumption. Another quarter is used to refine low-grade crude oils, like those extracted from tar sands, and turn them into liquid transportation fuels, like gasoline. The remainder is used in various chemical processes, like methanol and steel production. However, use of hydrogen for transportation is expected to grow, and by 2050 it is expected to be the largest demand in both the European Union and South Korea, as more heavy vehicles like buses and trucks, as well as passenger cars, shift from diesel to hydrogen fuel cells. There are certain advantages to fuel cell vehicles over electric ones, in that the energy density per volume is similar to batteries, but the weight is much less. This becomes important as vehicles get larger, up to the sizes of buses and trucks, because the battery occupies more and more of the weight of the vehicle. However, the source of hydrogen matters, and currently nearly all of our hydrogen comes from fossil fuels. In short, the basic process involves putting natural gas or coal under high pressure and temperature steam to separate the hydrogen atoms from the carbon atoms, this results in just as much CO2 being created as simply burning the fuel, and can result in substantial emissions. Hydrogen generated in this way is known as gray or brown hydrogen, and blue hydrogen if carbon capture is used. Currently, this is the cheapest way to get hydrogen, coming in at around $1.50 per kilogram, but as you might expect, this is highly dependent on natural gas prices. Another way to make hydrogen is to use a process called electrolysis which can be done around room temperature and is a relatively simple process only requiring water and electricity. In electrolysis, a voltage is applied across the H2O, causing the hydrogen and oxygen atoms to separate. The process is about 70% efficient in producing hydrogen. If the electricity comes from renewable sources like wind, solar, or hydro, it's called green hydrogen. Since electricity from nuclear power is also low emissions, this kind of hydrogen is called pink hydrogen. Here, relying on electrolysis for hydrogen production is much more expensive, coming in at around $4 to $6 per kilogram for both green and pink. These costs should come down over time, and are estimated to be between $1.3 and $4.5 per kilogram by 2030. There have been some promising demonstrations of using nuclear power to generate hydrogen. In 2010, the Japan Atomic Energy Agency set up its High Temperature Engineering Test Reactor to successfully demonstrate producing hydrogen at around 2 kilograms an hour. More recently in the US, Constellation Energy's Nine Mile Point, a boiling water reactor in upstate New York, began operating an electrolyzer in March 2023. The one and a quarter megawatt demonstration unit utilizes electricity from the plant's electrical generator to create 560 kilograms of hydrogen per day. This is sufficient to meet its needs for on-site hydrogen demand to help cool components in the power plant. The low temperature electrolysis uses Nine Mile Point's existing hydrogen storage system so it integrates into the normal operation without extensive modifications. The plant previously relied on trucked-in deliveries of hydrogen made from fossil fuels, so this improves the plant's self-reliance and reduces the overall emissions impact. The company says this is just the start of a broader initiative, and aims to pursue development of regional hydrogen production and distribution networks for clean hydrogen produced using nuclear energy. 
At least three other plants in the U.S. are also working to start generating hydrogen using nuclear power. The Davis-Bessey plant is also working to demonstrate a low-temperature electrolysis system. The goal of the project is to prove the technical feasibility and economic benefits of clean hydrogen production. The reactor is expected to produce hydrogen at the end of 2023, with potential uses for local manufacturing and transportation services, including fuel for a local bus fleet. The Prairie Island plant announced plans to install a 240 kilowatt high temperature electrolysis demonstration by the end of 2024. Unlike the low temperature systems installed at Nine Mile and Davis Bessey, which use only electricity, a high temperature system relies on a combination of both electricity and steam, which promises greater efficiency, using about 30% less overall energy to produce the same amount of hydrogen. It's more complicated to design and implement, but it could prove to be a more efficient option in the future. The Palo Verde nuclear plant in Arizona also aims to produce clean hydrogen using low temperature electrolysis. But here, the idea is to produce and store up to six tons of hydrogen that can then be directed to natural gas turbine plants during periods of high grid demand or low solar availability. The concept of producing hydrogen for energy storage is gaining traction, especially as variations from renewables like wind and solar increase on the grid. In Russia, the Kola nuclear power plant began operating a 1 megawatt demonstration hydrogen production system in December 2022. Similar to the one in use at the Nine Mile plant, it is producing hydrogen to be used to cool plant components like the main turbine generator. The company says the capacity could be increased up to 10 megawatts. In the UK, although construction on the plant hasn't even started yet, there are plans to include hydrogen production at the Sizewell C plant as part of a broader effort to diversify the area's fuel supplies. The idea here is to be able to provide hydrogen to the regional community and nearby seaport in applications where replacement of fossil fuels is more practical. While all of these projects are in the demonstration phase, their success could lead to cost reductions and other nuclear plants exploring their own hydrogen production. The U.S. Department of Energy estimates that a single 1,000 megawatt reactor could produce up to 150,000 tons of hydrogen each year. This could be sold regionally for a variety of things, such as fertilizers, oil refining, steel production, material handling equipment, fuel cell vehicles, and even carbon neutral synthetic fuels. Even with all these potential uses, there are several limitations to using hydrogen as a direct replacement for fossil fuels. One issue is that the energy density of hydrogen per volume is relatively low. For vehicles, this means it needs to be highly compressed and stored in special tanks. While this isn't impossible, it does complicate the design and delivery systems compared to fossil fuels or electric vehicles, which can be somewhat more forgiving. For large-scale storage, compression alone isn't practical and additionally requires cryogenic freezing for trucks and ships. This is why most hydrogen production focuses on regional delivery. It becomes increasingly less practical to deliver hydrogen farther away. Large-scale storage has also been proposed inside of depleted gas fields and salt mines. In these cases, hydrogen is produced using clean energy during periods of low demand and then pumped underground. Then, when demand increases, the stored hydrogen is returned and used as necessary, such as for generating additional electricity. This has been proposed at several sites, like Ireland's Green Hydrogen Kinsale project, which aims to store up to 3 terawatt hours of renewable hydrogen in three depleted gas fields. In the U.S., the Utah-based company Advanced Clean Energy Storage wants to use electrolysis to produce and store hydrogen in an underground salt dome, and then draw on that hydrogen to supply a nearby power plant. Currently, that plant operates on coal, but it is scheduled to shut down in 2025. It will then be converted to gas turbines, which can be fed from the stored hydrogen. In Europe, there have been several proposals to repurpose existing natural gas pipelines to transfer hydrogen. By retrofitting existing lines, distribution systems can be built for about a quarter the cost of building out new pipelines. Another promising transport method is one that's already in place, and that's using ammonia as a carrier for hydrogen for both transport and storage. Because ammonia isn't as difficult to cool and compress, it can be transported similar to propane, lowering the cost compared to hydrogen directly. Already over 100 million tons of ammonia is transported each year, so handling is well established. The conversion back and forth isn't complicated, but adds about a dollar per kilogram to the cost of hydrogen. It's even possible to burn ammonia directly as a fuel, although its energy density is about half that of diesel fuel. Again, given the greater stability of ammonia compared to hydrogen, the practicality here is mostly for large vehicles, like trucks or marine vessels. So where do we see hydrogen and nuclear's role in the future? Government support has generally been strong, with multiple programs and funding available. In the US, the Department of Energy launched the Hydrogen Energy Earthshot Initiative in 2021, 
with the goal of reducing the cost of clean hydrogen by 80% to $1 per one kilogram in one decade. The program provides hundreds of millions of dollars for various hydrogen projects, including the demonstration projects at Nine Mile, Davis Bessey, Prairie Island, and Palo Verde. In Europe, the policy direction is less clear. Several EU countries, including Germany, have rejected calls to include nuclear-generated hydrogen in the bloc's calculation of green energy transport targets. This has reignited disputes with France, which relies heavily on nuclear power and is anticipated to use a large portion of that energy to meet emissions targets. Long term, the target cost of hydrogen production needs to be around $1 per kilogram for it to be economically competitive to fossil fuels and electricity. Nuclear energy can offer benefits compared to renewables for hydrogen production, particularly in the areas of scale, reliability, and the use of nuclear steam heat to produce it more efficiently. The ability to generate and store massive amounts of energy for later use could even be a game changer. Combined with other advances in increasing adoption, pink hydrogen may well have a bright future ahead if the costs, technology, and politics align. And if you'd like to show off your support for alternative nuclear energy, you can pick up an Ask Me About Thorium mug. Doing so directly supports this channel and gives you some pretty cool gear as well. So what do you think? Does nuclear-generated hydrogen have a future? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.